Uh, good evening everyone and thank you for being here with us. If I can just make some introductions and outline uh, what our plan is for here. Uh, my name is Dion Bennett, Inspector Dion Bennett. I am the Acting District Commander for Wellington Police uh, at the moment. Uh, beside me on the right I have uh, Assistant National Commander Bruce Stubbs who is the FENS Incident uh, Commander at the moment. Uh, Chief Coroner Anna Tutton and Her Worship the Mayor Tori Farno. Police are going to read a statement. It'll be followed by a statement by the Chief Coroner and then we'll take questions following that. Police want to first acknowledge uh, the heroic efforts of Fens uh, last night uh, in attending this blaze. Uh, a tragic event and um, we are thankful for the support to our community by the Fens staff. Uh, we understand this is a traumatic time uh, for many whānau and for many uh, people in our community. Um, we are working uh, tirelessly alongside our partners, alongside our other agencies, uh, to find the answers that we need. This requires an extensive scene examination and as you can see the building is large and the damage is extensive. It will be slow, it will be methodical and it will be detailed to ensure uh, that we find the answers we need. We anticipate police will enter the building uh, after a, a handover with FENS at some stage tomorrow, uh, mid-morning to midday. There are a number of health and safety uh, factors that we need to mitigate before uh, we place our staff inside that building. However, once inside, we will work as quickly as we can uh, to, uh, to achieve an outcome for this. We know that there are a huge number of questions that people will have. Right now we don't have the answer to all of those questions, but we will keep you informed. What we would ask is that uh, we don't speculate until we know the facts. And until we know the facts, that requires that scene examination. At this stage, the fire is unexplained, and police have brought in specialist investigators, uh, investigative teams from around the country to support the Wellington District uh, and the Wellington City to resolve this. Uh, until then, police will maintain scene guards on site here and tonight FENS uh, will remain with us. While we reiterate that we have yet to fully reconcile a list of all of those people who were here last night, who should be here or who were here as visitors, uh, we will not speculate about the number of star, uh, the number of people who were here and where they have subsequently gone. We urge anyone, family, friends or concerned uh, people, uh, if you have information that will support the reconciliation uh, of the list of people who were here, to please phone the Police 10 5 non-emergency number and use Operation ROSE uh, as your code uh, word to uh, support the reconciliation. Thank you. I'll hand to the Chief Coroner. Thank you. Kia ora. I want to start by offering my sincere condolences to the families and friends of the victims of this fire. Uh, I appreciate that this is an unimaginably terrible time for those who have lost someone they love. It's been reported to the coroner that deaths have occurred as a result of the fire. Legally, the bodies of the victims of this tragedy are in the custody of the coroner, but as you've heard, it hasn't been possible yet for them to be recovered from the scene. Once recovery of the victims is possible, they'll be treated with dignity and respect, and where known, specific cultural needs will be met to the greatest extent possible. The victims who've died will be transported to the mortuary and kept there safely until they're able to be reunited with their families. Coroners have a specific role under the law. That includes making decisions about post-mortem examinations and, with the assistance of police and other specialists, determining the identity of the victims. 
In a case like this, identification can be a painstaking, slow, complex process, especially when people are severely injured. That process takes time. We know that families will be desperate to have their loved ones back with them. We understand that, but we have to get it right. We work very closely with police to make sure that we do. The last thing we want is to have a family further traumatised by having someone other than the person they love return to them. As we know has happened numerous times in relation to similar tragedies overseas. We can't say how long the identification process will take, but I give my absolute assurance that we will work very carefully, methodically, thoroughly and as quickly as we can to reunite families. The police family liaison officers will keep families informed as we proceed. Again, I want to reassure the Fano and friends of the victims who've died in the tragedy that the people you love will be treated with kindness and respect and will be cared for as we work through the necessary processes. My condolences to all of the Fano and friends. Thank you. Questions? Do you uh, have a confirmed number of fatalities at this point? No, we don't have a confirmed number of uh, fatalities at this point. And the purpose of the uh, extensive scene examin examination that's required um, will help us determine that number. Earlier today, it was thought that it was 10 people or fewer that may have lost their lives. Is that still accurate? Uh, that's still accurate. However, our information is reliant on uh, that provided by FENS and they may have an answer for you there. Earlier today, the Prime Minister said there were six fatalities. Is that still happening? Uh, Fiends may be able to answer that <coughs> for you. Yeah, at this stage, we're would you sorry? Would you mind coming up? At this stage, uh, we have six people inside. There is extensive uh, damage within the building, and we have been uh, unable to uh, search all areas. There's a significant amount of uh, debris from the roof collapse, but at this stage, we've located six people. Is there any? Um, suspected human remains that have been identified that have not yet been um, confirmed to be a deceased person? Uh, at this stage we've located six people um, and so we've treated them with respect and ensured that the evidence uh, and the scene around them is made safe um, but there was there has been some uh, instability in the roof structure mm. and we've had our urban search and rescue uh, technicians supporting our frontline firefighters to ensure that when we have people inside that building, that it is a safe place for them to be. Um, yeah. Can I also confirm that all of those fatalities were from fire-related burn we, and smoke injuries? Yeah. Because there was some speculation that there may have been people that jumped from the building that were injured, potentially killed. Uh, we won't know the, the, how, how those people um, uh, perished at, at this stage until we work with uh, police and our fire investigators to determine that with the crime. Has the fire been treated as suspicious? Sorry? Has the fire been treated as suspicious? Yes. Are those six confirmed fatalities included or on top of the less than 10 people who are unaccounted for? At this stage, that's just the six that, that I'm able to, to uh, share with I you. think the confusion is so there were six fatalities and then the, the number was 11 people unaccounted for, are but then 10 or fewer in the fire. So is the six part of the 11 or... I guess how many... Uh, at, at the moment, I'm working on the six, um, and uh, police are working uh, with their teams okay. to determine uh, other people. Do you have a number of people who are unaccounted for at this point that are thought to have been inside the building at the time of the fire? That's the role for police in a reconciliation process, uh, and that is going to take some time uh, to uh, reconcile who was there. Apologies. Thank you. To reconcile who was there last night. Uh, so we can't confirm that until that process has been done. Uh, hence the importance of uh, any friends, family, whānau uh, who are concerned, please contact the Police 10 5 Operation Rose number. Okay. If I have just confirmed that the fire is very suspicious, have police been interviewing any suspects for that? Uh, the fire, uh, the cause of the fire won't be known. 
uh, until such time as a thorough scene examination is done. From a police perspective, uh, we don't know what has caused the fire, hence the reason for the examination that's required now. Okay. Police don't believe it's been deliberately lit. Police require the examination um, before we can make any comment about uh, the cause of the fire. A resident at the accommodation has told us that there were not one but two fires, that there was a fire at 10.30 that was started on a couch. People left the building after an alarm, went back inside and then there was a subsequent fire. Can you confirm that there was more than one? That's part of the investigation process and I can't confirm that until uh, the examination, the investigation has been complete and gives us a, a clearer direction. Um, as you can imagine, this is the early stages uh, and our priority has been to identify those people uh, who were here last night uh, and to locate them. Okay. I'd have to refer that to FEMS. Uh, so we're checking that now. Uh, we've been checking that to, to ensure uh, the the, um, the sequence of events uh, with with our own uh, alarm monitoring companies. Um, so yeah, that's at this stage I can't I can't answer any further than that. We're just you, working through you, that. You can't confirm if any alarms went off at this stage. Uh, so we're working through that with with uh, our fire communication centre. I can't answer that. And are you able to say where the bodies that were found are? In the I can't answer that, no. Can you just uh, tell us, give us a description on the structural damage that the fire has caused so far? With, there is a roof collapse uh, in the top floor. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's where there's a significant amount of debris uh, and structural members that have come down. Uh, inside in that uh, that top floor, there's a lot of destruction. Right. Last question. Can I ask how many people are working on that reconciliation effort from the register? How many people you know the whereabouts of? Because that's obviously the missing gap that will be worrying a lot of families. Up yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, as of today, uh, we have six staff working on the reconciliation, and that um, team will grow as uh, more staff arrive in to support this operation. Can you just tell Thank us one last question? Thank you. The people that were living there, where are Thank they you. tonight? And are they, maybe that's something you could help us maybe with. Tori? Tori? Yeah, um, if, that, if that's okay. Have been displaced? Yeah, of course. So approximately 50 people have been displaced by the fire uh, and they will all uh, safely sent to an emergency centre uh, in the suburb. Um, almost 20 have been put into new accommodation. And thank you to MSD and other social services that have been given access to things like blankets, food, showers and made comfortable. We've also released a uh, mineral relief fund. Uh, Council's put in $50,000 and we're also asking the general public um, if they'd like to contribute. And this just ensures that those, uh, the families of those uh, who have lost people in this fire and who have been displaced have the support that they need moving forward. Thank you.